Hey VC, this is Glenn Kellaway coming to you from the basement. This is a contest entry for Jason Nike, a fellow Canadian. Jason, congratulations on 100 subs. I just became aware of your channel within the last hour. I saw Rachel's uh, upload contest entry and uh, immediately went over to your channel, checked out a couple of videos and uh, subscribed to your channel. Congratulations on 100 subs. Uh, you look like you got a pretty cool channel going there and I'm sure uh, that's gonna grow uh, and grow and grow. So Jason has kind of a cool, fun thing going on here for a contest. Um, there were like four, five, six parts to it. The first one was uh, talk about a nightmare you've had. Um, I couldn't think of a nightmare, but when I was younger, my parents, we had a family cottage. And uh, my dad uh, kind of built the cottage up from an old uh, garage. And uh, um, it was, how do I explain this? I don't know. It was just, it was in a small little place, small little village, the village of Sturgeon Point, just outside of Fenland Falls, Ontario, if anybody knows where that is. And in the middle of summer, it was very busy and very active. But if you were there in the spring or the fall, all the people were back in the city. And uh, there was like maybe a one family or something that lived up there. So I, uh, after I finished college, which would be like the end of April, I would go up there and stay. And I'd be by myself in this whole area. One night I went to bed and uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and I could have swore there was a figure hovering over the end of my bed, like floating in the air. And I kind of startled awake. I grabbed the pillow from the back of my head and threw it <laughs> and uh, woke up and the figure was gone. So I don't know if I was dreaming, if I saw something or not. I remember mentioning it to my dad a couple of weeks later going, Dad, I had this weird frickin' thing happen to me. And he said, you know, I think I see and hear things in here all the time. <laughs> After that, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm not normally one who believes in ghosts. But that was kind of a scary experience. I'll tell you, I stayed up the rest of that night, uh, turned on all the lights. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of a nightmare, I guess. Um, favorite albums? Well, anybody who's watched my channel regularly, I always spout off about the same frickin' albums all the time. Beatles, Stones, and nah, nah, nah. So I wanted to pick a few different ones that are favorites. Um, some I've shown before, some haven't. Some are just new albums. Um, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Van Morrison's Astro Weeks. Came out in 1968. His second solo album after Blowing Your Mind. A great, great album folky, jazzy, uh, oh, I don't know, poppy. It's just uh, an incredible, incredible record. One of the greatest albums of all time. Van Morrison, Astro Weeks. My favorite Canadian female artist, Kathleen Edwards, who's just come out with a brand new album. It is called Total Freedom. It's a great record. If you're not aware of Kathleen, she's really talented. Um, check it out. Uh, it came on gold vinyl as well. Uh, I also have an autograph cover to go with that. So, the great Kathleen Edwards. Here's an album, a soundtrack album. Since this is kind of movie-based, this kind of covers both things. Um, I Pink Floyd, Jerry Garcia, The Grateful Dead. Uh, who else is on this? Man, Patty Page, Tennessee Waltz. <laughs> The Young Bloods, uh, Roscoe Hawk Holcomb, uh, Kaleidoscope, John Fahey, and Pink Floyd. Uh, this is an amazing soundtrack. Incredible. A friend of mine has a bootleg where Floyd, it's like a two CD boot of all the music that Floyd did for this movie, and it's incredible. I'd love to get my hands on it. It is um, impossible to find. It's a holy grail of mine to try and find it, but. If you haven't heard this uh, soundtrack album, Zabriskie Point, um, excellent, excellent, excellent album. Okay, Power Pop Band, Big Star. This is their second album, I think. 
Radio City, really, really good album. The first one, I think, is the one with the black cover with the star on the front, and I think this one followed it. I like this one better than the first one, but uh, they're both great albums, so Big Star, Radio City. And a jazz album that I just picked up recently, um, probably the greatest live jazz album I've ever heard. I've always been aware of this album. I'd never heard of it until I got it, never heard it. Um, jazz at Massey Hall, my hometown in Toronto. Recorded in 1953, the year of my birth. Uh, Charlie Parker, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Charles Mingus. I mean, it's just an incredible, incredible album. Great album, and this one is on... It's on a green, yellowy vinyl, and look at the label, man. I just freaking... I think that might be my favorite label of all time. It's so freaking cool. Great, great album. So there's a few albums that I like. Um, what else was I supposed to do here? Favorite movies. Okay, I don't have a collection of movies on DVD because once I've seen a movie, I've seen it. I'm not into to a library of films. Um, I uh, My favorite movies of all time are The Godfather, um, Abbott Costello Meet Frankenstein, Bullet with Steve McQueen. Uh, there, I'll show you one. The Beatles Help and The Beatles Hard Day's Night. Love the Beatles movies. Uh, Marx Brothers, any Marx Brothers movie. Uh, Night at the Opera, Duck Soup. Love all those old uh, comedies. Um, yeah, so um, that's, uh, that's a few of the movies that I like. An album that helped you love music. Um, I didn't bring one out to show an album that helped me love music well how about an album that helped me love a genre of music because I, I I've just loved music all my life I don't think there was one particular album that made me love music I feel like I'm from the cradle the uh, first note I ever heard I loved it um, so I'm thinking uh, jazz would be uh, Miles Davis kind of blue after I heard that album it was uh, yeah we're on a jazz journey so uh, Miles Davis was uh, certainly an album that helped me love a genre of music. A movie that helped you love new movies. I was thinking about this one. And then uh, I, I had a hard time thinking of one movie that made me love movies. But you know what? When I was a, a kid, my Uncle Ken used to take us to the movies on Sunday night and to see the horror movies that were out in those days. And they, I guess I fell in love with the movies and going to the show from that. And I was probably like... I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old, and he'd take us to see The Brain That Wouldn't Die and uh, The Blob, The Raven, anything with Vincent Price and Boris Karloff. And, uh, oh, man, uh, there was just so many of them. Um, just love those old kind of late 50s, early 60s B-movie horror movies. They were freaking awesome. They were great. Um, so that's kind of... Uh, Kind of my thing about uh, what got me into movies. Um, favorite thing about John's channel. Well, I'm new to your channel, John. Or, or Jason, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, what I first noticed is uh, that you have the ability to edit and, and actually come up with good introductions and everything for movies. I'm, I, I just push the button and go. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's good that you do that. Um, also, I saw your video on 10 guitar players, which I really liked. And your your top 10 were was a little different, a little more uh, uh, different than what I would choose. You had Steve Vai, not that they're great guitar players, obviously. They are. Um, but Steve Vai was in your top 10. Brian May was your third favorite guitar player. Uh, he wouldn't be in my top 10. But uh, hey, that's what this is all about. It's great to have a discussion uh, my fav top three guitar players are Ry Cooter, number one, Dwayne Allman, number two, and Jerry Garcia, number three. So uh, that's it. Um, I appreciate you putting on the contest. O Canada. And uh, Jason, we'll look forward to getting to know you and your channel better. I hope you'll check out mine too. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.